this this uh, fixed width thing, I think, is actually really, really important. It's the fixed width text part that is kind of contrived. I, I, actually, I don't think I've ever encountered data like this in the real world, but maybe someone has, and there you go, that'd be great. It's kind of a nice way of dealing with it. All right. Within the language, there's a few things that uh, work nicely with PACT, or that PACT makes a little bit easier. And these are three that I've encountered and used heavily. Vec. Really use Vec. Again, the bike guy. <laughs> Excellent. And nobody else has used Vec. What does Vec do? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a hint up on the screen. <laughs> uh, did anybody recognize that thing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, but the binary solo, I just about to beat myself. Right. right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I <laughs> um, anyway, well, we could watch it later. Vec uh, <laughs> allows you to treat a scalar, actually, the the, the, the char star that's in the scalar as an arbitrary length bit vector. So if you're doing any kind of bit twiddling um, in Perl, and you're using numbers, you shouldn't be. If you're doing things like single ampersand with you know constants, you should be using that instead. It's much better. That um, that that so you can use as many bits as you want. I'll have an example in a bit. Um, pack and unpack. Actually, that is trivially implemented in pack um, and unpack for that matter. Uh, you need both, but it is kind of a subset of them. And pack and unpack then. <coughs> provide some features that can work very nicely with that for dealing with these vectors. <coughs> um, the B template basically is a single bit. Um, so if you need to use your vector in some way other than doing it with a vec, like converting it into a string to look at it or converting it into a list to do something with it, pack and, or actually unpack is how you deal with that. Um, and then there's a magic incantation in Unpack that lets you count the number of bits that are set in the vector really nicely. Uh, but that's just magic, and we'll show you that in a second. There's no reason it should be in there. It's quite of like it's a subcase of a subcase of a subcase in Unpack that just happens to do this thing. Uh, and pulled off my that if you're doing bit twiddling, you should read that and start using it back instead of numbers. Here's my example. We have a million bits. <coughs> Uh, to create a vector, I don't know why this is, but you pretty much, if you're creating a new bit vector, you always have to pass it an empty string first. If you don't, weird things happen. The, by the way, the canonical use of vec is for select, where the select system call is, you, you're supposed to give it bit, bit vectors. Uh, <coughs> I think that's the reason why it's in the language, but it's got other use. Um, the string of high, we've got that. Single B template means one bit, the star means indeed all the rest of the bits, right? <coughs> um, uh, this one, the <coughs> B behaves oddly. It doesn't return a list. Everything else in unpack, you, know, you would think looking at this that it would actually return a list of, of scalars each containing a zero or a one. It doesn't, it returns a string, a, just a special case. <coughs> uh, to turn it into a string, then you split it on nothing. Um, or to turn into a list, excuse me. And then there's this magic incantation percent. The percent is a uh, checksum, which is useful if you're dealing with like TCP headers and things like that. There's lots of binary specifications where you need to do checksums. If we're 32 means I'm getting a 32-bit checksum. That's what will be output. And B star is to the thing to the right of the checksum template part is the, uh, what I want to checksum from. <coughs> Any notion of the one that you saw is the only one that's the first thing? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's probably special case on the low case group. Okay. That, that. Well, there's, there's a lot of packed formats that actually you can't specify star with as well, and unpacked just does as well. Oh, really? That's yeah, I've never read the documentation. Of, so I don't remember which ones they exactly are, but there's, there's only a select set of them that it actually does work on. The star? So yeah, I don't think go. that's special of a case that it returns a string. It just happens to be, you know, five, it's 
eight of them work one way, one of them works another way, and then the rest. Yeah, there's a lot of special things. Yeah, there's no question. And then, yeah, that's the question. The second one, if you put one, what? Oh, sorry, that's an L value function. So basically, uh, that, that's the way VEX works for setting a bit. Okay. To set a bit, I, I should have talked about this. So the bit vector is the first argument. <coughs> um, I want to set the one millionth bit. That's that one million part. The third argument is actually the number of bits, because you can use it for uh, a, basically any power of two up to 32 bits or a I actually don't know the limit. But you can use it for bit vectors of <coughs> doesn't have to be only one bit, one bit, bit vector. Mm -hmm. um, I've never seen it used as anything other than one, but there's other people doing it. And then the, the equals one is an assignment. So it works as an L value. It's just saying I want to set one bit starting at the one million bit in bit vector to one. <coughs> is that anything else in the world that has to work that way? They have to use as an L value? Yeah, they don't think so. Well, sub subster you can assign. You can. Subster, the you can, but I'm asking you have to. That will return the value if you don't use it as an L value. Right, it's both. Oh, same thing. So the return, like, but substr, the L value substr, I'm actually going to talk about that next, but the L value substr has, you can also give it a fourth argument instead of using it as an L value with the same behavior. Yeah. In the case of that, you have to use it as an L value and you get the actual second bit. That's what you're talking about. There we go. Okay. <laughs> So the magic of L value substr is that it does not, it guarantees as part of the language that it will not reallocate the string that is underlying your scalar this on the C side. It won't reallocate the, the chunk of memory on the heap if you provide exactly the same number of bytes that you are that you on the left hand side as on the right hand side. <coughs> and this is occasionally important. <laughs> Uh, if you're dealing with very, very large binary structures, you don't want Perl to say, oh, I need to reallocate something, make a big copy of it, and only to put in there to, to fit your one extra byte that you accidentally slipped in there. Well, there's, <coughs> there's also even more than that. Is there? If you, if you remove the head of a string, any length off the head of a string, you use substr to replace nothing with it. Perl uses a hack called offset OK where it doesn't reallocate the string. Oh, it just basically pointer. says, right, we're going to put the pointer over here, yeah, and then the rest of it is just kind of lost memory until that, uh, until that scalar value is reallocated. I like that. I'm sure I will have a key. Well, it's for the it. same use case when you're doing like network buffers, very right. large things and you're trying to step through them. Mm -hmm. Same idea. Yes. Yeah. So there's ways of basically using L value substr. The long and short of it is there's ways of using L value substr to not reallocate underlying memory under your, under your scalar. Um, I have a great example of when that's important. Uh, but the way this works with TAC is, you know, of course, you need to be able to tell accurately what's on what you're replacing. Um, that's for example, often where if you're dealing with binary data structures, well, you're probably going to need to use TAC. So if you put the right thing in it says it's dead wrong, it will reallocate. Control will do what you need, right? <coughs> if you accidentally replace four bytes on the left hand side with five bytes, it's gonna reallocate everything to make room for it. My favorite example, sysmmap. Because the way sysmmap works is <coughs> uh, you pass it in a scalar and it moves pointer <coughs> to point at the memmap memory. So your scalar, now the memory that is underlying, that is backing your scalar, <coughs> specifically the, the, the string part of your scalar, is mem mem memory map memory. If Perl reallocates it, it's gone. 